we're going Wagyu again today because I'm going to be grilling up Wagyu Bavette steak out on the Weber kettle. Yes, Wagyu Bavette steak. Now, I've never done that cut. It comes from the sirloin. It's almost like a flank steak in shape. And because we've got that great Wagyu flavor from the marbling in it, we're just gonna go simple with the rub. But we are also gonna be making a chimichurri sauce to go on it at the end. But first, we're gonna get our rub ready and get it on that Bavette steak because that steak's gonna sit in the refrigerator overnight with this rub on it. So very simple, we're going with a tablespoon of kosher salt, a tablespoon of cracked black pepper, and two teaspoons of granulated garlic. Just gonna put our lid on and shake. That's it, a good mix of simple flavors that are gonna help enhance the flavor of this Wagyu Bavette steak. So let's get it on that beef. So here is our Wagyu Bavette steak. Now this was sent to me by Wodagyu, which is a family-run ranch in Texas. All of their beef is hormone-free, it's pasture-raised, and it's 21-day dry-aged. They've sent me several cuts in the past, you've probably seen some of the videos, and it is always top-notch. I'll put a link in the description so you can check out what they have to offer in terms of their Wagyu beef cuts. And if you decide to order something, use the code CWR for cooking with rye when you check out and you'll get 20% off your order. But now let's get to seasoning this Bavette steak up. And this is gonna sort of dry brine overnight as I mentioned. Go ahead and turn this over. I am right now starting to drool <laughs> thinking about this. This is gonna be terrific. Make sure I get this edge here. I know I could use a shaker here, but I kind of like just using my hands when I'm doing this. Let's get back to our first side. Let's give a little bit of a final dusting here. All right, I am very happy with that. Now this is gonna go in the refrigerator overnight on a tray, and I'm just gonna loosely cover it with some plastic wrap. And then tomorrow, we're going to grill this up out on the Weber kettle. So our Wagyu Bavette steak has been sitting overnight in that dry brine. We're gonna get it out to the Weber kettle in just a couple minutes, but first we need to make a chimichurri sauce. Now this is my version of a chimichurri sauce. There are a lot of recipes out there. If you have a favorite one, go ahead and use that. This is mine. We're starting with a half a cup of finely chopped flat leaf parsley. Then we've got half a cup of finely chopped cilantro. We have a half a cup of finely chopped red onion two tablespoons of minced garlic, one teaspoon of dried oregano, one teaspoon of kosher salt, a quarter cup of olive oil, and a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. Now we're gonna mix this up and then we're gonna decide if we wanna add some more olive oil. And I think I wanna add just a little bit more olive oil, maybe a tablespoon or so. Get such nice bright scent coming off of this. All right, let's have a taste. Mm, I'm happy with that. All right, I'm gonna cover this with some plastic wrap, set it aside. And we're gonna get our Wagyu Bavette steak out to the Weber kettle. All right, our kettle with the cast iron Mallory grate on here is nice and hot. Normally I'd be using the Vortex here under the cast iron grate, but because this Wagyu Bavette steak is so long, I actually created sort of a dam in there using the two briquette baskets to just create a hot zone and an indirect zone. So let's get our Bavette steak on. We're gonna go for a couple minutes on this side, then we will flip it, sear the other side, and then we'll move in direct. All right, we're gonna go ahead and give this a turn. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move our steak in direct. I wanna turn it so that the thickest part is facing 
the coals. Now I want to go ahead and just get a baseline internal temperature here. We're ultimately going to be taking this to 130 degrees internal. So I just want to get a baseline to see where we're at. And I know we're going to be super cold still. Yeah, I mean the interior is still showing 42 degrees. So we got a fast sear on the outside and now we've got to give it time to come up to temp indirect. So we're going to get our lid on and we're going to check this in about 10 minutes. So both the top and bottom vents on the kettle are fully open. We're just rocking and rolling here. We're going to let this go and we're going to check that temperature, as I said, in about 10 minutes. And then we'll gauge and see how much longer might need to go. Now that bavette steak is thick enough that I could put a remote probe into it, but I just decided not to here. I think if we give it 10 minutes, we'll see what the rise is and then we'll be able to estimate and ultimately get us to that 130 internal. So I'll bring you back in about 10 minutes. All right, we've been going about 10 minutes. Let's give our Bavette steak a check. Let's see if we can get right down in the center there. Looks like we're showing about 78, 77 degrees. So we still got a little bit to go here. I am gonna turn it now to the other side because that cast iron grate is hot even though we aren't direct on this side. And I do wanna keep the thick part closest to the coals. That's this sort of ledge side over here. All right, let's get our lid back on. We'll check it, I'm gonna say in seven minutes. All right, let's give ourselves another temperature check here. Man, this smells good and it looks gorgeous. Looks like we're at about 105. So I am guessing it is gonna be about you know, another five to eight minutes. So we're gonna go for five. Now we're gonna go for six and we'll check it. All right, we've been going for six minutes. Let's give it a check. I think we are gonna be pretty close. Let's see here. That is reading 129. That is reading 131. I am gonna call this. I know that the ends are gonna be more cooked in the center. That's logical, they're thinner. That's also great about this steak because if you have people that like more well done, they can have these ends. All right, we're gonna get our Wagyu Bavette steak off of here. We're gonna get it inside, let it rest for about 10, 15 minutes, and we're gonna cut into it and have it with some of that great chimichurri sauce. So here is our finished Wagyu Bavette steak. Got just a really beautiful color on the outside. Finishing it indirect gives it that chance to develop some color without just charring, leaving it directly over the coals. I think I want to cut into it first before I put some of the chimichurri on. So let's do that. I'm just going to go dead center here. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's cut a slice. Oh, nice, look at that. Now you can see the grain actually runs this way. So right here, I'm cutting with the grain. If you wanna get some more tender slices, you can go this, but honestly, just cutting straight into it this way to be able to see this, that's what I wanna do first. Now let's get some of our chimichurri sauce on here. Just wanna drizzle a little bit of this on top, a little bit on some of our cut slices there. Oh man, that looks good. Just love the pop of that green against that red of that medium rare center there. Now, we took this to 130 degrees. Different cuts will sort of present themselves differently. That looks even more rare than medium rare to me, but it's probing at 130 degrees. Really at about 135, you're gonna move out of that pink color in this cut of steak. And you're gonna start moving more towards a true medium. But this is how I like this. If you want it cooked a little more, go ahead. So with that said, it's time to taste. There is a definite juice lanch on my cutting board, and I don't mind that. All right, I'm diving right in. Here we go, piece without the chimichurri first. You know, I've said it so many times when I've had Wagyu beef, especially cooking it on the channel here, there's just something about the beef flavor. It is deeper, it's richer, it's just more intense. You don't even have to do much to it. In fact, you wouldn't have to do anything to it. But that salt, that pepper, that garlic powder, dry brining overnight, just enhances the beef flavor. So once again, Wodagyu, thank you for sending me this Bavette steak. It is amazing just from that first bite, I can tell you. Now I cut another little piece from closer to the end. As I mentioned, 
those pieces are gonna be a little more well done. It's a thinner spot right there. So if you have people that like more well done, this is a really great cut. I set it out at the grill. I'm saying it again here. Center is going to be in that medium rare range. When you take it to that 130, 135, the ends are going to be more medium-ish. You don't really want to go too beyond that because you're going to start to lose some of that inherent flavor from the marbling. But here's one of those end pieces. Oh, man. I'm not a medium guy when I'm eating stuff like this, but that is really good. All right, here we go. I'm going to have a little bit of the chimichurri sauce on one of those center cut pieces. So does this cut of meat need chimichurri? No, not at all. But it is a nice little additional option if you have people that want a little bit more flavor, some of that brightness of the parsley and the cilantro. It is a really nice little kick to this. Goes just terrific. Mm. Now, Wagyu is not something you'd be eating every day, but it is definitely a treat. This Bavette steak was about three pounds. You know, this is gonna feed four people easily, five or six even if you're having a dinner party. And it's just such a great quality and such a nice treat. And when you cook it like this, you give it that couple minutes on each side of a direct sear. And I think we went about 23 minutes indirect. Get it to that right temperature, it just turns out perfect. So if you, like me, were unfamiliar with what this bavette cut was, I'm really liking it. I like the structure of it, I like the thick center, the narrow ends, gives options for lots of eaters, and when it's Wagyu, you, you just can't lose.